show, this episode may be sensitive to fans of Paul Weaver. Wait, she has fans? Since... Apparently I'm on the wrong planet! <laughs> whoa, I whoa. I, I don't think we have a whole lot of fans of Paul Weaver. Well, there might be some. It's a cult following. Yeah, it's a cult following. Welcome to He's a Phantom Podcast, where we talk about everything Danny Phantom. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape. This is probably the first time I introduce myself in these two, epi- two three episodes, because I keep forgetting to introduce myself. Anyways, uh, let me introduce you to my co-host tonight, this afternoon. What the fuck am I saying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mike. Now, I mean, first you forget to introduce yourself, and now you're just like, how many people, what time of day is it? Oh, what time of day is it? Oh, it's the afternoon. That's right. Uh, Zane... <laughs> Zane is not with us this afternoon because uh, he has obligations. It's understandable. Uh, so we got Wade Phillips and Dave, Devin Cook with us t- t- this afternoon. God damn, I keep seeing tonight because I'm so used to filming at night. <laughs> this afternoon, this afternoon, this afternoon. Uh, so t- today's episode, we're talking about parental bonding, which is the third episode, but they aired it as the second episode, which still confusing as fuck but mm-hmm. anyways uh before we actually get into it uh zane wrote down his thoughts about the episode really quick here so he really enjoyed the episode like this he loved the speed of the episode he found the principal trying to <laughs> he found the principal trying too hard to be cool it's hilarious <laughs> and, he, and, and he loved it when danny switched voices with his dad oh yeah uh oh <laughs> Shake your thing. <laughs> Word G. <laughs> Mr. Lancer trying to get in touch with his own de- with, with his students demographic. Oh. <laughs> get down with your bad self. Boom. <laughs> it's like shake your thing. <laughs> down with a man. Oh, Lancer. <laughs> oh, Mr. Lancer. You It's like One oh thing- my god. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention about him before, because I don't think I've ever brought this up before in our last two when we talked a little bit about him in the first one, mm-hmm. was when he gets excited or when he gets mad, it's really interesting how he'll just randomly shout titles of famous literature. Oh, yes. yes. That's right. That is I correct. Do, I always think that's hilarious. I always love that. It's like Instead of swearing, it, it's actually kind of funny. To, it, I guess it goes... In part with his whole love of, because I think he's a he's a huge poetry fan as well, from what I from what I understand. He's an English teacher, right? Yeah, so he's, he's also the vice principal, isn't he? Yeah, he's the vice principal and an English teacher. An English Why teacher. do you think he's always giving Danny F's? <laughs> he's yeah. sleeping in class. <laughs> Bad Danny. <laughs> so, the episode of parental bonding basic synopsis is that Danny is crushing hugely on the school's most beautiful girl, Paulina. He asks her out to go to the big dance with him by giving her an amulet he found, but his ghost abilities keep doing weird things, causing Mr. Lancer to have a parent-teacher conference with his dad, so Danny has to overshadow him in order to make him make it okay. However, another bad thing has been going on. The amulet that Danny gives to Paulina came from the ghost zoning causes everyone, including humans, to become very mad to turn into this fierce ghost dragon. When Danny finds out about this, he finds himself in a major pickle. <laughs> I read that from Wikipedia, so... Of course you did. I did not write it. <laughs> in a major pickle. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the precursor scene to the intro is Jack is fishing in the ghost zone. <laughs> He's got the... With his latest <laughs> device. Fisher. Yes, his latest... And he's <laughs> drinking... This is the first introduction of the soda drink hat. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> it was Jack Fenton's hat, Mr. Krabs. He was number one. Not so many <laughs> when whatever his name was. 
I don't even remember. It's like Schmini Werger Jensen or something like that. <laughs> I was like, I give up. <laughs> Oh no! This interruption is by a phone. Damn you, phone. <laughs> mm-hmm. I know! <laughs> it, it happens. It does happen. It, it, it does happen. I'll be like, have my cell phone. Wait, I don't have a home phone. <laughs> Answer me. Sure. Sort of... Thank okay. you. So, well, it does sort of remind me of um, the Fenn Fisher a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> the, uh... As you were saying, Mike? <laughs> so, Dan so Danny takes control of the Fenn Fisher because Jack has to go to the bathroom because he's drinking too much soda. And he fishes out this ghost dragon and he fights him off, of course, at the beginning. And the amulet comes off the dragon and it turns out to be this, like... Uh, like this medieval... Amulet of Aragon. Yeah. Right. It belongs to Princess Dora. <laughs> yes. Princess Dora. That's... The one thing I will always say, I love the one line, it's like, I have to go! It's like, you're We're gonna, gonna have to wait, have to wait line line my <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I burst out laughing, I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> So then it leads up to, you know, that there's a big dance going on, and uh, it's Paulina! Girls like her are a dime a dozen. Wait, wait, do you, do you, wait, wait, hold on. Do you, do you have any dimes? Wait, how much you got there? It was funny how they pulled out the change out of their pockets for that. And Tucker clearly has a thing for Paulina, too. They both do, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. Yeah, go out and check out that book. <laughs> And I will be Sam just rolling Check out that book, Danny. Can't always judge a book by its cover. Well, there's one way to go find out. Check out the book, Danny. <laughs> and he's stateless again! Mm -hmm. Oh, Tucker. <laughs> he can never get a date. No, he can't well. catch a break. I always felt bad for him. <laughs> well, to be honest, he probably doesn't go the best way about asking a girl out either, Tucker. <laughs> well, hi, no. <laughs> hi, would you? No. How would you like that? No. <laughs> no, I didn't even say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I love when um the one ki the the last girl he asked out was Valerie, and mm. um. And, and this like, is Valerie's introduction, by the way. Yeah, it is. This was Valerie's introduction. She'll play a later role. In this yeah, series, but... Yes, she will. But do you, do you guys notice how she has a different voice actress? Yes, yes. It's, it's usually the first appearance of a character has a different voice act, actor or actress. And then later on, when they come back, they have a different voice. Um, yeah. I forget. I think that was, um... I think it was Grey Delisle at first, then someone else took. I think so. Well, the person who who uh, did, the person who took over was the, I've heard her voice so many times. It's the same actress who voiced Susie Carmichael from the Rugrats and Rugrats All Grown Up. Yes, that is and true. And she also voiced um, Miranda from As Told by Ginger. And she did one other voice too, but I, that I can't really think of off of the top of my head. Oh, yeah, Chloe from Sabrina the Animated Series. Oh, okay, okay. I knew her voice. She, this actress has done a no number of different voices. I was like, wait, who is it? I, I don't remember. I'm not right sure of her name. I think Creed is her last name. No relation I... to Apollo Creed, <laughs> by the way, from Rocky. But, yeah, it's something Creed. I'd have to look it up. Oh, uh, Gray, Gray Griffin. Did the voice of Valerie. Oh, later? In this episode. In, in this episode. I was right. Grey yeah. Delise, yeah. I, yeah, whatever. Delisle, I've been calling her Grey Delisle, but... Yeah, it's... Um, She's Griffin now because of her marriage. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, was, I was right. <laughs> and of course... And Ke Kevin Michael Richardson is a major player in this series because he voices a lot of characters in the series, including a Skulker later on in the series. But in this episode, he voices the dragon and also Paulina's dad. Oh, Paulina's dad. That's oh, the... my God. The, um, the uh, big, muscle-bound mustache dad. 
Yeah. Who yeah. every young guy is terrified would be, you know, terrified of. Yeah, because then if you hurt your daughter, your ass is grass. Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't tick off daddy. D no, don't tick off daddy. He'll go out. Don't ever come across. Don't ever break daddy's little girl's heart. You know what happens. Exactly. That is dads true. Can be, dads can be scary, especially especially meeting your girlfriend's dad for the first time. Yep. I. Uh, yep. Especially my dad. You don't want to meet. <laughs> My dad was like that to my ex-boyfriend. He's like, break her heart, your ass is grass, or I'm shooting you with my gun. <laughs> and that was I have, terrible. Yet, I, have yet, I have yet to find out. <laughs> good good luck okay. to you when you get to that point. <laughs> Though I have to laugh when it's, Valerie comes... It's almost comes... the equivalent of meeting your in-laws, kind of. Only you're stuck with them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. De Devin, uh, what were you going to say about Valerie? Uh, about Valerie. Well, I loved how she came up to him. It said, it's Sucker, is it? Uh, Tucker, actually. <laughs> no, sucker. Like, sucker. <laughs> it makes sense, because you suck. Oh! <laughs> um, that's terrible. <laughs> so, it's gonna lead up all to this. What do you think about Paulina? Damn it. Uh, Take it from here. God, uh, you know how we talked about clicks in the last couple episodes? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well, here's the thing. The one click I despise is the popular girl group. The ones that are all about the clothes, all about the makeup. And they're just like, oh, I have to look pretty all the time. Oh my god, I have to have that fleecy tee. Or I, my social popularity is over. My life will be over! <laughs> I seriously hate... Now your camera's frozen. <laughs> but... What was I saying? Oh, yeah, I don't like that character just because she's the biggest... That's that's her clique. She's the queen bee. She's the popular girl. She'll break anybody's heart regardless of who it is. She goes after the popular guy. That is the main purpose of her. That's all that really... That's what she is, and that's what really annoys me about her. I don't like that in a character, and she's... Those are the characters that annoy me the most. Are the ones that are all high and mighty. All the... And especially when I hated how in this episode, how she's just like, alright, I'm just gonna ask this goth freak's boyfriend just to um, steal her away. And... Yeah, and... she's just she's just doing it to, to tick Sam off. Because she knows that Sam's like, likes Danny. Yeah, well, it's starting to show signs that she um, likes so, yeah. yeah. Sort of. it's, it's all just to tick Sam off because she looks she looks down on Sam, basically. She sees Sam as somebody who's inferior to her, like you said, her clique. Yeah, because Sam doesn't but Sam, believe in the... Sam's a better person, though. She is a better person in how she's, you know, like like, I've, like we've said before, she just, you know, she, she's one of those people who will try to be your friend no matter what and who will always be there for you as a friend paulina is just a, just somebody who wants to make a fool out of you basically yes and the she one prob I it never shows this but she very well might make jokes about just the whole fact that danny had a huge crush on her behind his back and probably making fun of Tucker and Sam in the process, all three of them, with her little yeah. group. Yeah, it doesn't show it, but we know. No, it's that... left up to your imagination, but that's all part of the. I think that's a huge part of the, of the uh, creative process. It's the whole less is less is more um, scenario. Yes, it's that's what it is. I like her character to me is the essential shallow most superficial character in the whole show. 
even some of the other characters, which will be introduced later, are not as superficial as she is. Right. Right. She's a she's basically a, a cardboard cutout catty girl. A very. <laughs> yeah, uh, I I love that um, one line that um, Sam said about being shallow, not getting your feet wet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Shallow water. If I stood in the puddle view and not get my feet wet, then yeah. (laughs) Yeah, you're shallow. It's, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. That was the best part. I was just like, thank God somebody gets it. Like, Sam could see right through her. She could see right through her, and the guys cannot. And that is, it's usually the women that notice this stuff. (laughs) Cause guys well, it's, are... it's 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 the opposite too. When when there's a there's a guy out there who's a real jerk that all the girls like, but all the other guys can see through. And it's the exact same thing, mm-hmm. except sure. this different role. Yeah, that's okay. I will not deny that. Yes, I will not deny that. I'm not going to go the sexist route where all only oh, men no, no. are. St- no, <laughs> I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not that. No, I may hate her, but. At the very least, I could understand. Yeah, there's those women that fall for the bad boy. That's common, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Just like how the, there's a lot of guys that fall for the popular. And mm-hmm. Danny, and no exceptions. I think she's she's um, I think she's older than uh, than all three of them. She might be a senior or something from what from just my, an educated guess, probably. I thought she was the same. I don't remember. Um. I she she's taller either... than the others. She's taller, but that doesn't mean she's older. Yeah, uh, she's good. 15 years old. Oh, okay. I was going to say, where the hell did you find that information? Wikipedia. Okay. I was going to say, um... Because I remember... I couldn't remember if she was in the same grade as them. I just knew she was the popular one. I don't think they ever really stated it. I think in the later episode, episode, though, when she was doing a cheerleader chant, she, one of her chants was, I'm a senior, and something else. That, that could be true. That could be later, uh, later on in the series. Yeah. This was later on, though. That was another episode. Right. Season two, I think. Yeah. I'll have, I'll have to ro- double check when we get to that point but yeah i never actually that was one thing i never knew was which if she was the same age or if she was Five. older than them. but i can understand being her being older because think about it when you are in these cliques and you are the yeah. popular one yeah that would make sense you're older because how likely are you to be a freshman and be the popular girl right Five. it's because you're just unlikely. brand new Yep. You're just exactly. getting to know everybody and everything. But for me, it was pretty easy. True. It's not always easy. They'll always go after the fresh meat. <laughs> yes. That's what we were called in high school. We were yes. the fresh meat. Yeah, that's a common fresh name. Fresh meat. That's funny. <laughs> fresh meat. That's what, I was, that's what my high school used to always say. We used to always go, oh, here's the fresh meat. <laughs> so, yeah, but I don't, yeah, no. That's just the one thing that aggravated me the most about her. The, I will give one bonus though. Um, she, the, I do love her voice actress. Her voice actress is Marie Canals Barrera, or um, or um, the mother from Wizards of Waverly Place. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did she if do any didn't. other voice acting? I'm not aware of it. I'm not sure. I just know she's very known for that one, but she might have done others that I'm not aware of. That's, I always remember her as the mother from Wizards of Waverly Place, That's... and she was a master of disguise of all movies. Yeah, her most main I role. I remember that movie, The Master of the Skies. I remember when we, when I was in sixth grade, when we had a, oh, what was it called? The Rockin' Lockin', which was like a sleepover at, at the middle school when I was in sixth grade. That was, that was the movie they actually, they actually shown. And it was like one, it was like one year after it came out, Master of the Skies. Oh, jeez. I saw it a while back. Yeah, I just... I have been seeing that in a long time. I did see the critics' review of it though. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, I've forgotten how goofy this movie was. I, oh god, my friend um let me borrow her DVD because I actually bought it for her for Christmas because she loves the movie so much. So I decided to borrow it, and <laughs> she we were living together as college roommates, but um I felt like I was suffering. <laughs> You hated it, I'm guessing. I did. I hated it. The only thing I liked was the turtle scene. 
mustard. That's, that's the most famous scene from that. I remember when that movie came out, everybody in my class was quoting that line. And that's it. That was the only line. Uh, just looking at her other voice work here. She uh, did Static Shock, Scooby-Doo and the Monster of Mexico. Let's see. The Proud Family, Justice League. I remember the Proud Family. Oh, I love Proud Family. Uh, I forgot to Boondocks, what else? Generation Rex, Pound Puppies, uh, Batman the Dark Knight Returns Part 1 and Part 2. So, she's got some voice acting under her belt. Oh, that makes sense. I The only reason, I forgot about Proud Family, though, though that does make sense how she'd be in that show. Yeah, she's a lot in American it's... descent, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. that and she sounds really great. I always liked her. Oh yeah, absolutely. And she does. She does a, for her credit. She does a good job as this character. Very true. And you know what character she reminds me of, Paulina? Ooh. Trixie from Fairly Odd Parents. The popular... oh, oh, no kidding. Yeah, it's the popular kid. You know, kid, yeah, mm -hmm. popular girl. Yeah. Yeah. That Timmy has a crush on. Yeah. And this is oh. something that. This is something that's definitely come up in a lot of different TV shows and movies, by the way. And there's a similarity here that um, you actually mentioned on one of your notes, Devin, that I remember when huh. you made a list of your uh, top ten underrated films. When you yes. talked about the movie, the 2005 movie Sky High. Yes. You mentioned the character Royal Payne. Mm-hmm. That yes, character and that whole situation with Will Stronghold and I forget what his his, his uh, childhood friend's name was the one the girl who could make stuff grow. Yeah, but I forget her name too. Anyhow, I digress. Same situation. Will was Danny. That his friend was Sam, and um, Royal Payne was basically Paulina. The only difference is she didn't turn out to be a supervillain. <laughs> but it's still the same scenario, basically, of Actually, yes, being I... used just a toy with somebody else's affections. It has nothing to do with true love, basically. No, and I, I no multiple movies do this. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's the high school cliche, which of oh, course yeah. that's what makes it work, though. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, the Danny Phantoms of the high school um, slash ghost fighting episode, so. But right. I will. But well, besides, yeah, the high school clicks and stuff. I do mm -hmm. like that dragon and the amulet. Is there a mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. That is cool, actually. Right. That is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty green color too. Yes, that is so true. I love that design. It's like a gold necklace with like. It pretty much gold. covers the entire neck when you think about it. It's yeah, just like, it does. Just, it does cover like the whole drawn. entire neck. The illustration, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it transforms, so it makes sense why right. um, it would cover the whole neck. Because have, right. have you guys noticed, like, when they transform, the necklace Into is the still dragon, off. yeah, because... Yeah, because it has to fit the size of the dragon's neck. Right. right. And it's much larger and thicker and longer than a human's. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That, And then I think that's why they fit so easily onto mm -hmm. the um, people's necks... And it only happens to the people that wear the amulet. Exactly. When they get really ticked off, they basically it's it's almost like like uh, the whole Bruce Banner syndrome, basically turning into the Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Except the dragon. Yeah. So is it called the Incredible Dragon now? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the Incredible Dragon. You only have to wear a necklace, and it's not a new scientific experiment mumbo jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> And it's emotional distress or anger, as, as said in the episode, but... Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because there's the scene where Paulina really emotionally harasses Sam in the girl's uh, bathroom. Yeah. When she reveals how, oh, I don't really love Danny, I'm just using him because, um, you know, I always thought you liked him. Danny and I are not only friends, we are best friends. Well, then that just tears it then. Take your stupid amulet and go somewhere else, and you know oh. that's when... Oh god, that yes, she took. She was flipped out. Yeah, and she had every right to be too, because she, you know this is her friend. She's basically Danny's gonna. She's like, you're my best friend here is gonna get hurt by you. 
by the emotional, sh by the shallow little witch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, one thing I think that we should talk about too, uh, which I think is very important in this episode, is um, not that it really has it. Well, in a way, it kind of has to do a little bit with the plot of the episode. Yeah. Sam's gorgeous prom dress that she or, or homecoming dance excuse it's it's a homecoming dance yes. it's a homecoming say. dance but that dress yes. Yes. the way and the way she looks as well sam's you know sam's always cute to begin with but that was a magic moment it's like sam like you never haven't seen her before it's it's like mm -hmm. like sam's like the tomboy and she doesn't wear dresses a lot and but when no. she dresses up she's like gorgeous just like that just like she, mm -hmm. i can dress up like a pretty girl too that's what I love about her character. She oh, can. Yeah, she can look beautiful, and she does, but she doesn't yes. choose it. That's the th that's the catch. And some of it comes from her personality as well. Not only just the look it looks, it's also from her personality. She has a really awesome personality that I think anybody would find attractive. Basically, she's fun. She's cool. She's compassionate, understanding. She'll go on an adventure with you. Yeah, she'll help you when times are rough, and I, I've yeah, she'll be there to support you. Yeah, she'll be your best. She'll be your bud. She'll be your best friend. Yes, and I think the one of the thing that makes it clear about Sam, especially in this episode, is she. Yes, she's hanging out with two guys, but that doesn't mean she doesn't want to be loved. Like think exactly. about it in the episode, she is kind of she doesn't say she wants to go to the dance, but Danny figures it out that she does. That, right. And then I remember how Tucker was like, she didn't want to, but when you think about it, she said he, that, but that doesn't mean she right. means it. And then he and possesses, I, he possesses Tucker in order to to ask her out. That I thought was brilliant. Good job. Danny. And Tucker's I, eyes turn turn. He was uh, like, bright oh green. my god, <laughs> and she was all excited. I just love seeing that because it shows that she's a she she may not always act. Right. Like the pretty, pretty girl, but she still wants to feel like a woman. She still wants Absolutely. to be able to feel. And that, to me, makes her a good character. She's a great that... character. Not not only a good character, a great character. She's probably my favorite character of the whole show. Oh, so yes. I would say definitely in my top ten, probably probably top five, maybe even. Oh yes, she's my favorite character in the show. Period. Besides Danny, so. Even I'd more. say that too. I'd say I'd say maybe Danny comes in a close second for me, and Sam probably number one. Rock on. <laughs> close. That's how I feel too. I'm just like, and I like the ending dance. Um, that that was a really nice. Moment. Yeah, that was a nice moment. Just make sure you're you're still wearing a belt, Danny, or something. She says to him just when they're keep dancing. Your pants up. Just keep your pants yeah. up. Yeah. That's a running gag throughout this episode too. And yes, yeah, so is he still? figuring out the ghost powers and sometimes the ghost powers make him his pants drop that, i thought it was funny he had good taste in underwear <laughs> i think this means we have to have a parent teacher conference Fenton. see <laughs> and that's the, this is the subplot of the episode where danny has to think quick because he because dash likes paulina too and he was danny was stuffed in the locker and he goes out mm, to, i remember this being, oh, so he yes. escapes out of locker through his ghost powers, and he accidentally goes into Danny's bo uh, Dash's, Dash's body. Dash's body, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, I'm in Dash's body, whoa!" And he starts, <laughs> and he starts fooling around as Dash, you know, he's trying to make him unappealing to Paulina, and then he realizes I could do this more and more, and he does it to his mm -hmm. father to do the parent-teacher conference, so he doesn't have to get in so much trouble, blah blah blah. And he does yeah. it to Tucker, and it's, it's it's a very unique power to you know. Oh, and Paulina's reaction when when Danny's basically taken over Dash's body and tries basically tries to, to repulse her. Yeah. She's like, ooh, get away from me, loser. I thought it was great. And I love how Dash, after he I'm, comes Just to him. let you know, I'm every now and then I will do certain impressions. I'm, I'm an impression guy. Thanks. Impersonation, I should say. Thanks for the heads up. What was I going to say? Oh. I love the line after um, Dash, like, it comes out of his trance, and he said, why do I want to scrub my mom's feet? <laughs> it's funny, because cause when, because the person being a, a possessed, don't, 
don't remember what's happening. So no, they after, don't at all. So yeah. when when he leaves the body, they don't know what what happened to the. No, nope. pe- it's the same way with like in cases of exorcism, they don't remember after the fact. So it's they they do a lot of good stuff with the ghost lore and all that stuff. Yep, absolutely. An- another uh, addition to the whole uh, supernatural and paranormal uh, lore within the show, which is awesome. And Danny uses this to his advantage as well because it, it can kind of get him out of trouble in certain situations, like mm-hmm. parent-teacher conference. Oh, when he goes to um, basically um, tell his dad that Lancer wants to see um, both you and Mom, Danny, I can't right now. I'm fishing in the ghost zone. I can't have any bad news at, thrown at me. But, Dad, this is really important. Why is it important, Danny? Is this bad news? <laughs> <laughs> and he wants to have a word with us. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh my God. Oh, of course they, was... and then of course they come along to the, to the uh, homecoming dance, and uh, and um, Jack is trying to do his best Saturday Night Fever impression, <laughs> but yeah. fails at it. He's just like. With the, oh. He's wearing his he's wearing his lab suit, you know that jumpsuit of his, which yeah. just throws a tie around. Yeah, yeah That's puts it. a like orange tie on. It's like, <laughs> My, like talk uh, about really dressing up for an event. <laughs> I I do have to say probably my favorite Jack moment in the episode was um it's like who the heck are you and why are you talking to my wife? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah. That's the one thing I mean Jack's a nice guy. He's a gentle giant, but don't ever come between him and Maddie. Nope. No. That's to, the other to, st- stay tuned for yes, that because that's no later foreshadow. on. No yeah. that's foreshadow later in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, very important foreshadowing, but anyhow. Uh, yeah, Mr. Well, Lancer trying to be real. hip and cool. Uh, get down with your bad self. And <laughs> pulls he, like, bumps. His nose is stuck in the book, and he, like, bumps into everybody. He, he's he actually has... Hip. He's got, like, <laughs> a... He has a book that's basically, like, an instruction manual for fitting in with the demographic of the kids that he <laughs> teaches, his students. But it, the... It's like fitting in with your students for dummies. But it's it's but, but the slang and he's using is really old too. Is like all seventy. Really, sl- really. I mean, it, like it's not. Slang. It's not from like when we were growing up during the two thousands. Some of this is maybe like seventies, seventies, um, maybe early eighties, if anything. But definitely seven. It's like it's, it's like it's like disco era almost. Yeah. Kind of jive. Or just... or like um, something like out of well, like you said before, something like almost um. Rich, like something like Richard Roundtree would have been in in the early seventies yes. with the sideburns and the big yep. afro. Shaft. Yeah. Shaft. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Something like that. Yeah, the black exploitation era. Yeah. yeah. It just seems so weird. Like it... I literally was laughing the whole time. It is. <laughs> and he's like bumping into everything too because, like I said, his nose is stuck in the in this book and he's not paying attention. And just just uh, the animation too of that scene. His body proportions and everything. I think the one thing that's kind of enjoyable about Mr. Lancer is the fact that even though he's just so out of his time era, it's yeah. enjoyable to see him trying so hard to fit in with the kids, but he just mm-hmm. can't. <laughs> he just can't. No, he can't. He's 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 fighting a losing battle. I just. I'm still flabbergasted that Ron Perlman voices Mr. Lance, and so I'm like, I, I did not I was even like... know that that was Ron Perlman until, um, until our first podcast when you were just going over different voice actors. I know yeah. who Ron Perlman is. I just didn't know that. Me it's either. Him. I'm just like, I'm trying to picture him voicing. I was like, <gasps> what? He did it a good. Kind of... He did a great job. A great for job. Because usually he's got a deep baritone voice, but I know, he but just... he had to make his voice sound very almost like 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 a like a, like a decrepit. Basically, he's playing the de- decrepit, decrepit fool, kind of. Yeah. That's kind of what he's playing. I didn't know who he was, so I just was kind of oblivious. But I was doing, like, research on voice actors. And I was like, some of the people surprised me. 
I was like, oh, yeah, crap. Some of the, some, I was looking up some of the voice actors, too, and, you know, not to mention any names right now, because we could talk about this in other episodes, but mm-hmm. my eyes kind oh, of popped yes. out saying, that, that so-and-so, that's, that's this guy yep. from, the, that's, that's... You I'll know. have an I'll have a perfect example of this much later yes. in the later later season. Yes, so yes. I there's will... there's a lot of good uh, voice <sighs> acting in this series and a lot of guest spots and it's just like it's gonna be interesting to talk about. Uh, yes, it's amazing. I'm not, when you think about. I'm not gonna dare ruin the big one. Don't. So that, spoilers. Will... Spoilers. <laughs> that one I'm excited about. But, Going um... spoilers. Well, Any, uh... Okay, I noticed an animation goof in what the episode. It? Do you know when they're in the mall and um, S- Danny, Sam, and Tucker are having this conversation about Paulina? And mm-hmm. when it t- jumps to Sam, she literally has like long sleeve t shirts for one frame of the scene and then it's back to her shorts. I did not notice that actually. Huh. Holy it's, crap. It's true. Watch the episode again. It's hysterical. One frame, long sleeves. Next frame, it's completely short again. I mean, it's not really a, like a. She's wearing a tank. Oh, it's like a black tank top it's, with a pur- it's purple a black oval. Tank top. On. Yeah, there's but no the, sleeves on it. Exactly. That's what makes it so funny. It's it's just literally like no. It's like sleeves. Mm-hmm. No. But then all of a sudden it has sleeves and then it's no sleeves again. Right. I just was like, whoa! Wait a minute. I didn't notice that. I was just like. I told you, I'd notice a lot of these animation goofs. So animation goofs. <laughs> well, you study animation, too, don't you, Devin? I don't, kind of? No. Um, maybe more the show, but I didn't really study it, like, as a, you know, in school. Right. But, but what I mean, like, studying it as in you're very knowledgeable about the history of animation and, and different that things. I from, sure, just like I am also with, like, classic films and stuff, what I've watched, what I've read... Oh yeah, I'd probably be very animation documentaries, heavy. animation heavy. Yes, I grew up with a lot of animated films and Disney, DreamWorks, as success. as uh, Mike and I probably have as well. Well, yeah, we grew up on that. So I think almost yeah. everybody's group, group has grown up on uh, animation in general. Yeah, a lot of yeah. people have. It's I mean, usually one hasn't? of the first genres you're introduced, art forms you're introduced to. Oh yeah, because animation. Media. Animation. Media. Yeah. John, get that get genre. that word out of my mouth when I'm talking about animation. Yes, yeah, so genre, oh medium genre. But, it's that, yeah, it's from the French. Genre, genre. It's yes. yeah. Animation's been an easy thing for kids to look at, besides live action shows and oh, movies, yeah. especially yeah, when I, they're first starting out. Yeah, unless. Okay. Like I said in the first episode, there was a long time ago this video on, like, this one live video website. I think it was literally called livevideo.com. They literally had um, a, a whole video devoted to Danny Phantom animation goofs. And I watched that, and I looked at every episode they mentioned and found them all as I watched. And it was kind of amusing as hell. You just have a keen eye for that. Uh, you gotta have a keen eye. You gotta really be paying attention. You, you really pay it, attention, yeah. If, and, especially since I was watching the show a lot, so I knew a lot of these goofs mm-hmm. before they even had the video on it. But the other ones I had to look at, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that was another one I noticed. Watch the episode again, you'll see it. It's only one frame, but it's, yeah, tank, no, sleeves, and then it's gone. It's actually very amusing. <laughs> Uh, there's there's a funny scene where they're trying to, not really funny, but it's like a scene I saw. There, Jack is getting all ready for the, being a chaperone, and he's like, I don't remember signing up for this, and Jazz is, there, just like, oh, thank God you're doing this. You're not gonna talk about ghosts or anything, and Jazz is talking to Danny like, I I know your secret, Danny. And he's like, what? What? You don't? You? My secret? I, I, I'm not a ghost. It's a lie. I'm not a ghost. Oh, she's just she's not my girlfriend. She's going to the dance with me. That's I like, can't got... lie. I thought that was so funny. I just I thought it was. I was just I'm like a ghost. I'm not. I'm, 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 no, no, she's not my girlfriend. I'm just taking the dance with her. Just don't well, no, just... Jazz is pretty much already on to the secret. Yeah, he's. She... She'll find out eventually in the series. Yeah. 
she'll find out. Yeah, it's eventually. It's actually not. Um, she she probably didn't realize it at first. No. Right. She's not very suspicious yet. No. It's, no. She's not. She's like, really really into her uh, psychology and stuff right now at this point. Yeah. At this but she's point, still. Yeah. But she is throughout the series. But right now, this that's her main focus. Yeah, that's true. I think right now this is uh, that's again. Jazz is uh, one of those characters that I grew on me. She grew on me. It's a shit oh series. yeah. And, and like I said, her it's 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 basically a change in character as well. Eventually, when she finds eventually finds out the secret as well. Like right now, she's basically somebody as as they as they as they actually say. She's somebody who's... She's basically, like, maybe, I'd say, just a guessing, maybe 17 or 18, maybe somewhere around there, maybe 16. She's but like she's... What, she, she's, like, trying to... She's trying, though, to act like she's in her 40s. Or maybe even older. Yeah, she's the brainiac of the family, though. Mm-hmm. It's almost like like she's the, pa- the parent and Jack... Uh, Maddie and Danny are her three kids in a way. Yeah, I think for this because the whole ghost hunting thing that right. um, Maddie and Jack are so devoted to ghost hunting, and, right. then Matt, and then Jazz feels like she needs to be the adult in the family. That's the right. more sane. Because like she's the parent, and they're and they're the three kids. But in reality, that uh, Jack and Maddie are the parents. But it's from a psychological standpoint. Yeah, it's um, with that Wikipedia here for character synapses, and then uh, she's 16 years old. Okay. And oh, she, I thought and she was... and she's she uh, she learns to embrace her 16 year old self instead of acting like an adult in a teen body. That's how I always saw her as the adult. Hey, in the... Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. And she dresses a... very. She also dresses very studious, which is which is kind of interesting too. She has sort of like a dark pullover top on with the headband and also the like she almost reminds you of somebody you, you would see in a th- like like at a doctor's office kind of or like if you if you're if you're uh, if you want to talk to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or somebody like that she almost reminds you of somebody who's who would be talking to you and asking you to lay down and tell me all your secrets basically or, or what's bothering you She's she's leaning towards wanting to become that. I think. Yeah, that's true. She's really into yes. psychology because she she goes around, and this is prior to the first episode. She's already going around uh, outside and just at, randomly asking different people what their issues are, and you know how they're all special. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is true, but. Well, the, I will say, I do, I, we didn't mention the ghosts yet, like, other than the fact that she transforms into a dragon, the dragon, dragon. ghost herself, Dora. Pr- Princess Dora. I actually find it kind of funny that, that her name is Princess Dora, because when you hear that name, what do you on, uh, right away think of? <laughs> I always think of Dora the Explorer. Exactly. <laughs> I was just gonna say, and that's, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. <laughs> Um, well, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I just think it's interesting that this episode, even though she's in it, she's not really the no, main exactly. focus. She comes no. back later on, and she <laughs> plays a much bigger role. Yes, that's yeah. true. With, a, with another character, but, you know, anyhow um, in here, she just, she, did, she, um, she didn't just step decide to come into the human world. She was, she got pulled out by... It was Danny that pulled her out, right? Yep. That's yeah. what I thought. Yeah, that's what happened. She, he was fishing, and I was like, oh my god, ah, I'm a ghost and, and yeah, she's I, clearly out of the 14th century when you hear her talk. Mm-hmm. Very true. I think it's just interesting because she's not in this episode. It's like, it's not really devoted to her. It, right. it, it's the ghost dragon, but it's not to her because of the necklace. No, it's to the, the, the It's to the triangle between Danny, Paulina, and Sam, really. 
to love Charlie. Yeah, Charlie's if that's really the biggest um, thing about this episode. It's not so much about the ghosts so much. It's about no. Danny and... It's the, it's the high school it's situations. Love, it's the high school love triangle. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like about this episode, even though I oh, hate absolutely. all the characters. Absolutely. And, you know, Paulina, even though she's very shallow... Um, and she's in real life. She's she would be the kind of person that you probably wouldn't want to hang around with. As a character written into this series, she's her role she plays is actually very well done. Mm-hmm. That I can agree with. That doesn't make me like her, but yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, no. Totally but there's a lot of built. There's a lot of. You know, I guess in a way you can kind of call. I don't know if you could, if you would strictly call her a villain. She's definitely kind of an antagonist in a way. She's more of an antagonist. She's not really a villain because no. not really like I wouldn't call her like a stone cold evil uh, cardboard cutout villain. Uh oh. Because the main difference is she's a brat villain. basically. Yes. Yeah, she was just probably a brat. raised with a silver spoon in her mouth, to say the least. I think so because um, she's the daddy's difference... little girl. <laughs> yes. The main difference, though, is an antagonist is just the opposite person that that the yeah. foes are against, but the villains are the ones that are purposely trying to attack the hero. Right, like so really they, sinister. Like the um, Skulker and the Box Ghost are technically villains because they go purposely right. after him. But and um, you'll get into, and we'll get even to more characters, including one in particular later on who's even worse than those two. I mean. Skulker oh, yes. and the Box Ghost. Well, Scott, Box Ghost especially is tame. Very the tame. The Box Ghost is tame. He's not really much of a villain either. All he He's like a villain wannabe, basically. He's a villain yeah. wannabe, but... Yeah, Skulker's the more intimidating so far well, of the he's villains the, that are He's the tame. bounty hunter. And the dragon, she's she's not really... Um, Princess Dora's not a villain at all. No. The whole dragon thing, it's, it's almost like it's, it's out of her anger. control. It's like either the Hulk or also um, Lar- the whole Lar- um, Larry Talbot in the original 1941 version of the Wolfman, basically. Oh, right, right. Basically, yeah. it's out of his control and it's out of her control. It's just yep. whenever she gets mad, it's like, don't make the Hulk angry. Don't make Princess Dora angry or else she'll turn into a Ray Harryhausen creation. Yeah. That's true. And that I think... That is very true. I like how it goes, the amulet goes from Dora to Paulina, and then to Sam, and then... I don't know where the amulet goes after that, because they don't say... Yeah, that. they don't do anything else with the amulet, they just end it. They, they just they, end they... it. Oh, here, yeah, you here's don't a, know. Here's a theory, and this is a crazy theory. Bunch of rats basically find it, uh, they give it to Nicodemus, he eventually gives it to Mrs. Brisby. And he tells it to use, use it um, to save her family. Uh, that's, 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 that's another story. That's a, that's a pretty good uh, twist. <laughs> that amulet was red. Oh. This is a green one. I'm crazy about the secret of Nim. So. I'm gonna I'm just, that's good. Now. That's good. <laughs> any oh any final thoughts on the episode in general? This is a this is an excellent episode. The first two episodes were very good and they were action packed, but this is the first one I would say that ties um, um, I would say a lot of emotional and personal issues within the show, including like first crush, fr- um, friendship, uh, su- always supporting your friends no matter what, um, heartbreak, all sorts of different things. It's got everything you need. Right. It's I, a very human kind of episode. I would, I would say it's a very human episode of the show. Yeah, it is, actually. Yeah, it's, it's A lot of human emotions. Yeah, see, this, this show doesn't only deal with uh, go- ghosts and stuff and other spirits. It also deals with uh, the emotions of the living. Yeah, it does. It has so many levels. And this, sh- this episode and this whole series, uh, to say the least, definitely has a really big beating heart. I think this is the first episode where you truly, the emo- characters' emotions are on the line. Yeah. Like, and the way it yeah. ended was really neat, too, how, you know, he doesn't even dance with Paulina, or, or they're not even really around each other for that long. Him and Sam just dance, and Tucker's mm. just sort of embracing the two <laughs> as if this is something that could very well be. 
but we have yet, yet to... It's, it's a very sweet moment. Yes, it is. And it nobody is. else is at the dance. It's The dance floor is just for those two, which is... Yeah, because everybody left because of the it's dragon. It's like they're the only two people that matter. They're the only two people in the school and in the world. It, it's a sweet moment, and it really it starts the connection between Danny does. and Sam, which will... And it just grows from there. Like, it grows like, like, a, like a rose. A very beautiful rose. Yes. Yes, yes. That, this is gonna be... This is the episode where I went and said, Alright, you got me. I'm watching on. Because that was the heart you of the show. You wanted to me. find out what eventually happens with these two. Where is you this whole thing gonna go? You, yeah, and you and I honestly kind of... think that this the whole relationship between Danny and Sam, to be honest, honest, is probably, in my opinion, one of the most strongest elements of the entire series. I think so, too. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's that... the emotional backbone of the series. It is. It is. Yeah. You, you can tell that even. Um, I remember, yeah, even Butch Hartman seemed to agree on that aspect as well. He felt that that was the strongest moment in the whole series. I agree with I'm like, good job, Butch Hartman. I'm thrilled you thought that. Kudos. Good, good, good job, dude. I, that, to me, was what the heart of the show was, and that's what drew me in. I was excited. I wanted to know what was going to happen with these two characters. I wanted to know these characters and see what other adventures were next. And that's yep. what you call great writing and great story and character development. When, yes, when and... you, It gets you to actually like, get, get sucked into the story... And also, it makes you attached to these characters. You you come to like them very much, that you want to see what happens to them, and, and you know you find them to be very interesting, relatable. And also, and also, in some ways, depending, you can even maybe even connect with them. You can even okay. connect with Danny and Sam because we've all been there. We've yes, all we have the different things that they've been through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. We all find we all find the one character that seems to be ourselves in a nutshell and i yep. think sam was that character for me yes that's Same why I, and that's why i really grew to love her and i was like oh that's it i want to keep going so this mm -hmm. was the episode that defined it all for me at the very beginning so i love this episode even though i hate paulina but for right. me i i it's, love it, so. it's minor it's only like minor it's minor, you think you hate me? She's probably thinking to herself, "You hate me now, Devin? Guess what? I'll be. I'm not going anywhere. I'll be back." <laughs> so stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Oh, geez. yes. Um. So next time we're gonna be gonna talk about the actual fourth episode. I guess we're gonna be good with per, with the production number until pretty, pretty much for the rest of the season. Pretty much. I think we're, gonna, we're good. I think we're good with the ordering. We're gonna go with uh, the Attack of the Killer Garage Sale. Mm. Oh, jeez. Featuring a new villain. <laughs> all I can by... say for right now is, everybody, think of all the technology that you use in everyday life, and think of what would happen if somehow all your beloved technology would turn will turn against you. <laughs> think futuristics. <laughs> think science fiction. Think ha the HAL 9000. Think the Terminator. All I'm gonna say is, stay tuned. Just think technology for just, the next episode. Yes, just, 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 think, just let that sink your mind a bit. Just think of technology. As Patchy the Pirate once said, I hate technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yes. So until then, stick around. Go ghosts. And have a wonderful and beautiful rest of the week. Remember, he's a phantom. Yes. See you guys later, and we'll see about the next episode. Can't wait for the next one.